Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from GGChicken.com here with another somewhat exciting Tutorial Tuesday. I don't know. I guess I'll just let you guys be the judge of how exciting this Tutorial Tuesday is. So the effect that we're going over today is this Matrix effect right here. I'm pretty sure you've seen it from the movie The Matrix. If not, then you're missing out on a pretty good movie. So, anyway, long story short, this is the effect that we're going over. It's just the following text from the Matrix, and on top of that, we also have a person kind of coming out of the text. That's Eli right there, just a picture that I took of him just the other day. And so, yeah, that's the general effect right there. So just a heads up for you guys, you are going to need to know how to work with masking in order to make this work. And if you don't know how to do that, that's okay. I've got a masking tutorial that you can check out. I'll give you a link in the description. And if you already do know how to work with masking, then you are set to go. Also, real fast, if you guys could do me a really quick favor and push the like button in the bottom left hand corner right there and leave a comment when you're done watching this video, that would be awesome. It's always greatly appreciated how uh, people comment and like the videos and Whatever, you've heard me say this like 800 times, so I'm just going to go into the tutorial. So, like usual, we're going to start off by making our new document. You can do whatever dimensions you want, but I'll stick with my 1280 by 720 resolution with a transparent background. And so we'll hit OK. And I'll just rename the first layer BG for our background. And I'm going to fill up this background with black by hitting Alt Backspace or Option Delete if you're on a Mac computer because my foreground is set to black right now. And so to start off this effect, what we are going to need is a bunch of text. And obviously it's going to be a really big pain if we have to go type all that out, and not to mention it doesn't even look all that cool if it's just standard text. So we're just going to do a little trick that I learned in order to generate that text automatically. And thankfully enough, this isn't exactly too hard. We'll just go ahead and minimize Photoshop, and we're going to make a new text document. And it doesn't really need to be called anything, so we'll just open it up. And if you're on a Mac computer, I don't know exactly what the text editor is on there, whatever, just open it up and give it a try. And so what we're going to do with this particular text document is bring just some random picture that we want, and maybe we'll just go with this one that I have of my friend Jordan. And all you're going to do is click and drag some random picture into your text document like so, and I'll minimize that. And as soon as it's done thinking, there we go. We should have a bunch of random text. And the reason this happens isn't exactly important, but uh, suffice it to say, this isn't meant to open pictures, so this happens. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and scroll down a ways, doesn't matter where, and we are going to select a good chunk of this, maybe about that much right so. And we're just going to go ahead and copy this, and minimize it, and go back to Photoshop. And now we're going to go ahead and swap to our text tool, and we are just going to click and drag a box that is the size of the canvas like so. And so once you've got all of that situated, we're going to have to go up to the top here and click this little icon to toggle the text orientation. And after you do that, you should look at your mouse. It should be a horizontal little uh, cursor thing instead of vertical, and that shows that we are going to be typing stuff horizontally. And I just realized I just said that backwards, which is kind of a fail on my part, but whatever. You guys get the idea. We're going to be writing text vertically rather than horizontally. There we go. Okay, so before we actually start pasting this random text in here, we're going to want to go up to the font and make sure we are set to Courier New. And we're going to have a six-point font. And the little, I forget what this thing is called. Let's see what it says. The anti-aliasing method is going to be set to Crisp. And of course, we don't want this centered. We want this to be set to align to the top. And the color that we're going to be using is a sort of greenish color, which is 4EFF73. And so that's the color that I'm using. You can use a different color if you so choose, but you know, follow along if you want. And so we'll hit OK to commit that. And we're just going to go ahead and paste in our text. Boom. And so once we've got all that text, we'll go ahead and push the little check mark right here in the top right-hand corner to commit those transformations. And I'm just going to push Control-0 to zoom up the canvas to see it a little bit better. And so we're off to a pretty good start, but we definitely need a lot more text than this. And we're not going to put too much effort into this. We're just going to go ahead and duplicate this text by hitting Control-J or Command-J if you're on a Mac computer. 
and you're going to want to go ahead and bring up this little character side panel right here. If you don't have it yourself, just go up to Window Character, see, right there. And making sure we're still on this duplicated set of text, uh, go ahead and change the size to 8 points. And we're going to amp up this little AV thing to 10. And so that should just change up the size and the spacing for us. And so now we're going to go ahead and duplicate this set again by hitting Control J. And this time around we're going to change the size to 10 points. And we're going to change the AV to 25. Alright, so now we've got a good set of random text. Alright, so the next step is to go ahead and add in a little bit of depth between these three sets of text. And one easy way to do that, just to start things off, is go to the Adjustments panel. If you don't have that, just go to Window Adjustments right there. And so we're just going to bring up a Brightness and Contrast Adjustment layer by clicking that icon right there. And we're going to change the Brightness to 50 and amp up the Contrast to 100. And so I'll just close that. And so that just added a nice little bit of contrasting for us so we get a little more brightness but still have a little bit of depth between the front text and the back text. So the next thing we are going to take care of is going to the first duplicate of the text that we made. And we are going to add a layer mask to it. And we are going to reset our foreground background color to make sure they're the white and black if they aren't already. And then we're just going to go up to Filter, Render, Clouds. And then we're going to do the same thing to the second set of duplicated text. So we'll select that add a layer mask and go to filter clouds it should be right there and personally I'm pretty content with how that's looking but just for the heck of it I'm gonna go ahead and select the layer mask for this particular layer right here and bring up the levels for it by hitting control L or command L if you are on a Mac computer and I'm just gonna position this a little off to the right and I'm gonna bring in the white sliders just so a little bit more of that text comes back like so maybe a little bit less and a little before and after. There we go. We got a lot more text. So I'll just hit OK. And I'm just going to go ahead and call that good. I'm thinking it's looking pretty awesome. So the next thing that I want to go ahead and take care of is swap to my move tool because I'm kind of tired of having little horizontal vertical text. I don't know. I'm tired of having my text tool out. So I'm just going to go back to my move tool just for sanity purposes. <laughs> Okay, so back to what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these layers and right click and duplicate. And just hit OK when this little thing pops up. And we're going to merge these duplicated layers right here by hitting Control E or Command E if you're on a Mac computer. And we're just going to drag these down below right here. And we're going to double click the layer and rename this to Blur. And the reason we called it Blur is, you guessed it, we're going to blur this. So we're going to go up to Filter. Blur, oops, there we go, blur, and we're going to add a motion blur to it, and we're going to make sure that the angle is set to 90 degrees, and the distance is set to 15 pixels, and we'll hit OK, and if you zoom in to 100%, let me actually zoom in a little bit more, you can see that before and after that just starts connecting these a little bit more, just gives that a little bit more of a streaky feeling, if that makes any sense whatsoever. And now that I look at it, this is looking a little bit too bright for me. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go to the middle text layers mask. And I'm going to swap to my brush tool by hitting the letter B. And I'm going to size it up with the right bracket. Or you can just use the little thing in the top left hand corner. And I'm going to swap my foreground color to black. And I'm just going to get rid of some there, get rid of some there, maybe get rid of some there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other text. Get rid of some there and there and maybe over there and yeah, maybe a little bit more right there okay so the next step that we need to take is start adding in highlights in all of these random texts and the way we're gonna do that isn't all too difficult we're gonna just add a new layer above the third set of text and we're gonna call this highlight because we're gonna highlight our text and I'm gonna size down my brush to about uh, maybe just roughly about the same size as the text so I'm gonna just stick with 20 pixels and I'm gonna swap my foreground color to white and the way you're gonna add these highlights is just by clicking and holding your mouse button and then hold shift and drag downward and so that way you're just gonna make a straight white line and that's all you're gonna do is just go through click hold shift and drag 
and you're just going to make all of these different highlights and stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this so you don't have to sit here and watch me highlight everything. So once you're done adding in all of these random white vertical brush strokes, you're just going to go ahead and change the blend mode of the highlight layer to overlay. And then if you so choose, just duplicate that, bring up the transform tool with control T and whoops, go back you piece of junk there. No nope. overlay piece of crap. <laughs> anyway, so what I was trying to say was you're going to zoom out if you so need to and then just click and drag all of this around 180 degrees and then just check mark that or hit enter you know whatever makes you happy and there you go you've got a lot of really bright areas yeah and so if you think that actually looks pretty good then you are either done with this effect or you can add in whatever person it is that you want to have pop out of the ver uh, yeah vertical text and the way we're going to do that is going to the brightness and contrast layer just because it's the uppermost layer and we are going to merge everything we see into one layer and to do that we're going to hit control alt shift E and if you're on a Mac computer that's command option shift E and I don't really remember where it is up here maybe I can find it layer let's see Nah, I'm not even going to try screw that, that too many menus. Okay, so once you've got everything successfully merged into one layer, we're just going to call this layer merged like so. And then we're going to bring up the picture that we are wanting to use. Whoops, that's my demo. There we go. We're just going to go ahead and bring up the picture that we want to use for our matrix effects. If you don't know how to cut a person out like I just did from this picture right here, then again just go ahead and check out our Photoshop tutorial on masking and that should get the job done for you and I'm sorry if I'm not describing right here in the tutorial how to cut someone out I'm just kind of doing this as it is just for time's sake you know anyway so just go ahead and click and drag whatever person is that you want to use up to your tab and bring it on back down and this is a little bit too big so I'm just gonna press control T to bring up the transform tool and I'm going to size them down so it fits a little bit better and let's see what's a good size maybe right about there would be good alright so now what we're going to have to do is use this picture of Eli as a displacement map in order to distort the background right here and the way we're going to do that is add a black layer underneath this let me rename him real fast that's Eli so to add a layer underneath this, we'll just go to the merge layer and add a layer like so. Or you can have the Eli layer selected and control click the create a new layer icon to make it beneath that. And we're just going to fill this with black by hitting control backspace or option delete if you're on a Mac. Because right now I've got my black as my background color. And now we're going to go up to file, save as. And we're going to save it as a file called distortion map. And we're going to make sure that we save that as a copy. That way it doesn't accidentally uh, rename and save our current document as distortion map. So making sure you have everything like that, we'll just hit save. And yes, I'm going to replace that. And voila, it's done. So we're just going to go ahead and delete this black layer. And we are going to turn off Eli's layer. And I'm going to hold my mouse over the layer mask thumbnail and give that a control click or that would be a command click if you're on a Mac computer and that should just make a selection of where Eli is 
And so making sure that we have our merged layer selected, we're going to go up to Filter, Distort, Displace, and just leave everything at the default 1010, stretch to fit, and repeat edge pixels, and we'll hit OK. And we are going to select the distortion map that we picked earlier, and we are going to hit Open. And as you can see, that just kind of distorted everything based on how that picture looks. But seeing as we still have our selection for Eli, we're going to use that for something pretty quick. I'm going to turn Eli back on, and I'm going to bring up the adjustments again, and I'm going to add a hue and saturation. And seeing as I still had that selection around Eli, that's going to mask the hue and saturation to him. That way it only affects him instead of everything else around him. So what we're going to do with this is colorize them, and the hue we're going to use is 132, and we're just going to change the saturation to 50, and I'll just close that back up. And now what I'm going to do is duplicate, or actually no, I'm not going to duplicate this just yet. We're going to change the blend mode of this to overlay, and now we're going to go ahead and duplicate that twice. And so now that we've got Eli duplicated twice, and we have it set to overlay, we can go ahead and merge these together in a group by selecting all of them and putting them in a group by hitting control G. I accidentally said merge, just ignore that, just put it in a group. And we're just going to call this group Eli. And to make this a little bit more convincing that he's coming out of it rather than just kind of overwhelming everything with blacks and all that stuff, we're going to add a layer mask to the group and we're going to swap back to our brush tool and I'm going to size it back up and I'm pretty much just going to mask off everything that's a really dark black. Okay, so for whatever reason, it didn't quite turn out uh, as well as last time. I think that turned out a little bit better, but I think that's just because of how much uh, white highlights and all that that I put in. But eh, whatever, no big deal. It still looks pretty good. And something that you'll notice, uh, even though you masked off part of Eli, there's still that distortion underneath him. So even if you don't exactly see all of Eli's layer showing through, you can still see a little bit of the distortion to, that kind of represents that he's there. And something that I figured out that kind of helps add to this effect a little bit is to go to the Merge layer and add a layer mask to it. And we're going to fill that up with the, the clouds that we did before. And then we're going to change up the levels on those by selecting the layer mask and hitting Control L or Command L. Again, if you're on a Mac computer, I'm going to move this over here. I'm just going to brighten this up a little bit just to see what we're getting up here. And let's just uh, mess with this a little bit and see what we get. All right, so that's actually looking pretty good for me. A little bit of a before and after. That's actually looking a lot better. So we'll hit OK. And just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. And I'm going to turn the layer mask on and off just to give you a little before and after. As you can see, it actually looks a little bit better with that clouds layer mask on there. And something else that I noticed, whenever you do the distortion, it kind of leaves this little like gap in the top or just wherever your uh, picture is supposed to be or whatever, however you want to phrase that. Either way you want to look at it, we're just going to go ahead and swap to our brush tool and size it down and get rid of that since we have a nice layer mask. Alright, so now that we're done, I can say thank you for watching this tutorial and following along. I really hope you learned something new from it. I know I learned something new from this. I've never actually done anything like this before. Or, I mean, who knew that you could freaking drop a picture into a freaking text document and get a bunch of matrix text? Alright, so anyway, if you haven't seen our previous tutorial, I highly suggest you go back and watch that. It's got quite a few neat tricks and all that stuff in there. And, and uh, you know, you always learn something new with every tutorial. I mean, you'll learn some, of, some sort of new strategy, some sort of different effect, you know. All in all, just keep watching tutorials, learn new stuff, get better at Photoshop, and yeah. Alright, I've rambled on long enough. I'm going to try and clean up my room and maybe listen to some music and take a nap. I'm freaking tired. So thanks again, and we'll see you guys next time.